TG Geeks, episode 358, December 27th, 2021. Writer, artist, wild man. Hello and welcome to another webcast from TGGeeks.com, where Ben and Keith, the two gay geeks, talk about all aspects of geekdom and nerdery, sci-fi, comics, film, horror, genre, you name it, we talk about it. I'm Keith Lane and we're coming to you from TG Squared Studios in lovely Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm Ben Raggington coming to you from Happy Day After Boxing Day <laughs> here in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> day After Boxing Day. Uh, the Feast of Stephen, you mean? Is that it? The Feast of Stephen is the 26th. Oh, well, this is episode 20. This is the 12. Tw episode 27 on December 358th. Yeah. <laughs> well, it just, I, I'm just looking at the script. It says December 27th. So I'm i am just guessing the day after Boxing Day. The day after Boxing Day. And Boxing Day is Feast of Stephen. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and that is useless trivia for you to know. <laughs> Prepare for hyperdrive. Meanwhile, in the Hall of Episodes, the two gay geeks are discussing this. By the way, we have a uh, trivia, Christmas trivia on um, the side widget for any articles that you go to right now, as well as snowflakes on the homepage. Yes, and, it's pretty. It's pretty. In this episode, we are going to talk to Richard Fairgray, and he is going to tell us about the new project that he has coming out uh, sometime in January. And then our birthday shout outs, our featured podcast of the week, our feedback segment, which is not very big this time. It's one bit of feedback. And our regular shout outs. If we have something in the second segment, we'll talk about that. And then our wacky weekly recap, as well as our regular shout outs. So let's get right to it. And this time, we welcome to the show Richard Fairgay, who is a prolific, oh my gosh, prolific author, writer, comic book, everything. Welcome to the show, Richard. Hi, good to be here. I love that um, we, we had it. We, here's, some, here's some parting of the kimono for people. Um, we had a big discussion before this started recording about, about how to introduce me, and um, you you did mispronounce my last name. It's it's Fair Gray. Fair Gray. Fair Sorry, Gray Fair Gray. It, no, it, I, it leans yeah. into it, – it, it helps with my branding to make sure people know that, that – um, you got, if anyone's listening, the secret to getting on this on this on this call is to just be like, "Look, I'm gay and I make comics. Can we talk?" <laughs> exactly. I apologize. Oh my god. Oh no, you're fine. You're I, I've, fine. Look, I've been called so many things in my life. Well, I, um, I have two. <laughs> getting, so. getting my last name slightly wrong is very normal. When I was a kid, I used to always wish my name was Fairgrave because I was just very into good spooky stuff. And it really bothered me that I was like, no, no, grave would be so much cooler. Like I'm dead already. My my <laughs> dream is to be a ghost one day. You know, I I I I have blocked that R out of your name ever since I've seen it. I I don't know how I man manage that, but I well, uh, talk You're one just up so for me. So excited about my homosexuality. It's understandable. <laughs> there you it's, go. You know, it's, it's very enticing. <laughs> so, <laughs> speaking of <laughs> growing up. Tell us the uh, elevator pitch oh, of your life. God, I'm scared now. <laughs> the elevator pitch of your life, uh, growing up, and how you got into writing and and comic books uh, and all of the things that you are doing. Look, I just I grew up in a place called New Zealand that everyone has heard of because of Lord of the Rings. Um, oh, side note, some random weirdo sent me a copy of Lord of the Rings on DVD to my house yesterday. A person I do not know. I don't know why they, I, 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 it's, 
I don't know how they had my address, but um, I guess what's I don't know if I'm more worried or more insulted that they think that I still own a DVD player. You know, <laughs> like this is the year of our Lord two hundred and two one. I I am I am on the internet, people. Um, but I so I grew up in New Zealand, and uh, <clears throat> I was. I was firmly under the impression that no one had – like the, the comic books didn't exist. Wow. Um, because I, like, there were four comic stores in the entire country, and I'd never seen a comic in person. I had seen them on TV shows, and so I thought they were just like a thing from the past uh, that like got referenced in cartoons. And then we didn't need them anymore because we had animation, so why would we need still pictures? So as a seven-year-old, I started making comics – with the idea that if I was the only person in the entire world who did this, I would probably become very, very rich. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm not going to say it worked, like, because I'm, I'm an adult and I can look at how much money I have in my bank account and say, nah, that didn't actually pan out super well, dude. But if I told my seven year old self how much money I had in my bank account, he said, he oh my God, mind. you're rich. <laughs> You'll be like, oh, okay, so we're going to, like, we are not just going to, like, by Dragonzord and Megazord, we are going to buy Titanus, the dumbest of the Power Rangers <laughs> creatures. The one that doesn't transform or do anything. It's just a Brontosaurus with a wiggly neck. It's more expensive than all the rest. Good choices made well, Richard. I bought 11 foot soldier action figures from Ninja Turtles just because I was like, no, there has to be more than one of them. They have to fight a whole group. Right. Use your imagination, idiot. <laughs> These are the things I would yell at. My my, my, my time with uh, the Ninja Turtles as a child was I knew I had to get all four turtle toys, and that, but only so that I could justify buying Splinter so that I could put the turtles in my child-sized wheelbarrow, put them on the other side of the room, and then go and hang out with Splinter in private because the turtles were all fighting bad guys, and I just wanted to be friends with the old man rat. Oh, my gosh. Far <laughs> out. <laughs> what an... Uh... Imaginative child you were, <laughs> and an I adult too. <laughs> I don't want to say that I liked him because his kimono could be taken off, but um, that was part of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have no response for that. <laughs> so you you have been uh, in uh, interested in fantasy and and that. That whole storytelling, because I, I uh, assume that you probably made up stories with <laughs> your toys and, and played with your toys to those those stories that you made up. Well, I learned to read and write like very very young. Um, I I kind of understood that like my 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 parents really like instilled in me this idea that like things that were were written down were important and they mattered, and if they were in a book, they were worth looking at. And um, I think that's not 100% true, given the things that are published in the world these days. But, you know, it was a very good lesson for me as a kid. And so I was like, I need to be part of that. And so I actually would watch people writing. I'm left-handed, but uh, I, for the first first six months or so of writing, I wrote everything with uh, backwards. Because I would watch people, and they would reach across with their right hand and write from the opposite side of the page. So I would do that with my left hand and just write everything backwards oh my. as I learned like, the alphabet. But I, I, I kind of taught myself to read by like listening to my mother read stories, looking at the words, memorizing them. I had this uncanny memory. And, um, and then when I, was, uh, when I was three and a half, I made my first book. And it was, it was called Donald Duck at the Haunted House. Wow. And it was uh, – I, I, there There are some copyright issues, but I, I don't think Disney are going to come after a three-and-a-half-year-old. I mean they will. <laughs> let's be honest. They will. But uh, it was about – Mickey and Donald were meant to go and explore this haunted house together, and Mickey didn't show up. So Donald had to go in on his own, uh, and he gets into the attic of the house, and he meets a ghost who is also sad because he also has no friends. So then Donald pulls out a gun – and shoots himself in the face so that he can become a ghost and be friends with the ghost forever. Oh, my word. Oh, my gosh. That's dark. <laughs> it got me in some trouble, I will say. 
Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm sure you. Uh, he's like, okay, let's see. Uh, let's well, the, look up the, therapists. Dis- here. Disney probably came after you for killing Donald, not for the copyright infringement, because the work is derivative. <laughs> I, I used to do a lot of um, – I, I would I would get pieces of paper and tape them together and be like, OK, I have a book. Now I have to put a story in it. So my stories were always very limited by the number of pages. Wow. Uh, I have a couple of them still. Like there's one – there's this kind of repeated uh, motif of there is no ending. So like I did my own version of The Three Little Pigs, which was basically the same as The Three Little Pigs but with a lot more farts. And uh, the wolf uh, – he kills the first two pigs, and then he goes to the, the third pig, and the third pig is like, oh, I'm going to build a house out of bricks. But it takes him a really long time, specifically four pages, to build this entire house. Oh, my gosh. And then, and then it just ends with him sitting on the roof with a smile on his face, and nothing else happened. Like, I just ran out of paper, so I guess he won. It just or like I have this, this story called <laughs> Daniel the Hobo. And it's about this guy named Daniel who each day he gets a different job. And on the first day, he makes $5 and gets McDonald's. And on the second day, he makes $10, so he gets to have KFC. And then it just says, and then he lay down on a park bench and had to sleep for a bit. And no one knows what happened to him after that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Because it was a one-pager. <laughs> no, well, that was, no, that, was, that, was a, that was actually a 16-pager. It had a lot of pictures. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> this is Daniel the Hobo. His face is dirty. That was page one. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I was doing the best work. So you you actually uh, have – obviously, when you grew up, you, you continued to write stories, and you continued to illustrate them as well? Yeah, so I, I've just always done everything for it. Um, I – the first, the first book that I, I – I was blackmailing my school librarian, but I've told that story so many times that it's sort of boring now. Um, uh and I got free photocopying through it, and so I, I printed a hundred copies of my first comic, which was Ghost Ghost, when I was seven, and <clears throat> sold it at a school athletics day. And uh, I made I made two hundred bucks, and I I did get to buy Dragon Sword, so I was like very excited because um, that was in case people don't know, and you know this is very important to me for some reason to get the Green Ranger, you had to buy Dragon Sword. The other Power Rangers were like all you know in their own boxes, but if you wanted that the, the, I'm going to embarrass myself. I, was it Jason or Tommy? It's Jason. It's, it's Jason. Jason the Green Ranger. Yeah. If you wanted that Green Ranger toy, you had to buy Dragon Sword. And in, you know, in New Zealand, that was $129. Oh my gosh. Um, no, actually, it's Tommy. So I, I take I, it back. I, it's Tommy. Jason was the Red <laughs> Ranger. Oh yeah, yeah. Jason. Jason's red. Jason's red. Billy is blue. Zach is black. Trini is yellow, and Kimberly is pink. Yes. Yes. Man. Well, I also know all the words to the Botsmaster theme song for some reason, but, you know, <laughs> worthless. Um, anyway. So so I, I, I made all this money from, from Ghost Ghost, and I was like, oh, this is what I'll do for the rest of my life. And so I just kind of kept making books and selling them at, at like, little – not not comic events, but, like, just anywhere that I could set up a desk and sell things. And, um, and then – when I was a teenager, uh, I kind of fell into being a stand-up comedian for a, for a grip and uh, kind of paid my way through college doing that while also making these books. And I did a couple of, like, pieces for for, for TV um, that kind of got me enough notoriety that uh, I could get sponsors and advertisers for my books. And so I was able to, like, really level up the production value and start, like, as a 17-year-old, I started putting out, uh, like, graphic novels – you know, like 180 page deep and meaningful stories that I thought were very cool because I was 17 that looking back on them now, I'm like, there's something here. But, dude, you were ooh, not not there yet. Um, <laughs> and then uh, when I was when I was 21 years old, I was making a, a, a decent living. I was doing a lot of conventions and I was just about to finish art school and I. I I genuinely I'd never met an adult who was happy. And so I was under the impression that I was just going to like quit comics and go and get like a normal job. And so I trained to be a high school teacher um because it just seemed like sort of the most convenient of the of the jobs available. And uh my my co-writer on a couple of my books was a high school uh media studies teacher and so I thought like I'll just become him basically, be miserable like him. And uh and then I 
kind of lost my mind and I read this book about um, uh, Kurt Schaffenberger and how when he got fired from Superman, like it came with no warning and there's just this one sentence in the book about how he, um, you know, he, he had to walk away from this thing he'd worked on for like 30 years with oh. nothing. You know, the books were out there, but he had nothing from it. And I thought, yeah, but at least like that sucks. There's no two ways about it. That sucks. But at least those books are still out there and we still know his name. And, and that's kind of cool. And I, I'm going to become a high school teacher like my sad, sad friend with his sad, sad life. And and that's not to say that being a high school teacher is sad. It's just that my my friend at the time was just a very, you know, a very sad, cartoonishly sad character. Um, and no one would know who I was. So I wrote a film based on Kurt Schaffenberger. And... Uh, then I, I had all this money saved because my plan had been to like buy a house when I finished college and I'd been you know, working like crazy and putting everything aside. And I was like, now, nah, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to spend all of this money on financing this film. And so I spent close to $200,000 oh um, making a film that no one will ever see. Uh, uh, you know, I wrote the script and then I directed it, which I did not have any experience doing. And I, I'm certain I did a bad job. We had very good actors we had a very good um, cinematographer who was who was overseeing things. Who was actually just our lighting guy, but he just kind of kept stepping in, being like, "Yo, Richard, you suck at this. Let me do it right." And he was correct. Um, <clears throat> and then while I was doing that, I uh, I was like, "This is this is going to be the last thing I do. I'm going to make a mark with this." No, I was not. But I thought I was going to make a mark with this film and then like just dip out. And uh, then. Someone found one of my books on a film set and showed it to someone who didn't like comics but really enjoyed my book because it made a reference to um, uh, the film The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner, which was his favorite film. And then by pure coincidence, he and I ended up connecting on a um, a, a prurient website, shall we say, mm -hmm. uh, in a chat room. And then when he put together who I was, he was like, oh, I just read your book, actually. And you then did? we still deeply love. <laughs> um, and then he was like, hey, I'm working on uh, – I, I, I don't want to – I'm going to shave the serial numbers off uh, of the story a little bit because of, of, of who I was connected with. But let's say a film about a mutant with claws. And, uh, and he was like, you want to move – to Australia where we're filming and, and live with me and, and have a really happy life. And I was like, absolutely. I will be there in like a day. And I just kind of walked away. And then while I was there, I talked to some other people who were with the production and it, like, obviously everything kind of didn't go as I thought it would. Cause I was by this point, 22 or 21 or 22. And, um, and I just, I, 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 I truly was that idiot who was just wide eyed and, and thought, oh, man, I'm going to just become a star. And so obviously it all fell apart and went very wrong. But just having people from outside of New Zealand, which is a great place to visit, um, look at my work and say, oh, no, you're good enough. We, 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 we would turn this into a film. We'd turn this into a show. We'd turn this into, we'd, we'd publish it you know, so you didn't have to keep doing what you're doing. It, it was the first time that I'd ever had that. Like, but people liked my books. I was making a living. I was selling a lot, you know, but I still just, like, I had to have someone from outside tell me that it was good enough. And then from there, I was just like, nah, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do comics and nothing else for the rest of my life. And so technically, I've never done anything else because I, I think I did four days as a substitute teacher um, <laughs> in the middle of all of that. But, like, yeah, comics are it for me. For cool. now until I inevitably freeze to death. And you have um, something new coming out in uh, January, correct? Yes, I do. I've um, At the beginning of this year, uh, I, I should just say the title up front. The, the book is called Haunted Hill. It's my favorite book I've ever done. Um, the beginning of 2021, I had two days off between projects. And uh, I was waiting on – well. I thought I had two days off. I was told that notes on a, a synopsis I'd sent would be coming on Friday. And so on Wednesday evening when I finished the last book, I was like, I'm going to do a little short story in between. 
And so I did this little six page story about a woman trying like she's just come out of a job interview um, in at, at, at 830 at night in a kind of seedy part of town here in Hollywood. And uh, she's she's trying to quit smoking, but she needs a cigarette and she can't find a lighter. And so she starts starts talking to a 25 year old girl who's standing on the street uh, waiting for someone to pick her up. And then <clears throat> my main character, Eva. Her Uber cancels on her for reasons that will never become clear, but it's pretty obvious she's just kind of garbage. And so Uber do not like picking her up. Uh, and so she has to get a ride home with this 25-year-old and her friends. And <clears throat> I have – I've gotten in cars with people in their 20s. And you think – they say, we'll give you a ride home. And you're like, cool. It's a 10-minute drive. And then four hours later, you are like – breaking into a random person's house or (laughs) like climbing over a fence at a junkyard because they saw a chair they want for their apartment. And you're just like along for the adventure. But as, as a, at the time with 35 year olds, I know that that's just tiring and I want to be in the adventure. I want to have the fun, but I'm also very enthused about sitting and lying down. Um, And so, so it was, I was trying to write a story that would just kind of capture that energy, but just imply it. And then my notes didn't come through, so I turned it into an 18-page thing, which I was like, well, this is actually a first issue. And by the end of 18 pages, the group of 20-somethings have ended up going to a donut place, and one couple have broken up. And then the 35-year-old woman, Eva, has alienated everyone. And also the donut place is entirely themed around Richard Karn from Home Improvement, because for some reason I thought that was a funny idea. And um, then I just kind of kept getting a couple of days off in between things, and people kept not getting me notes on time. And as of two weeks ago, I looked and I was like, oh, I've got 12 issues of this book oh now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and no one's seen it. I probably need to do something about that because, like, I, you know, I had a couple of graphic novels for kids come out this year. And I've got a couple – I'm, I'm, I'm contracted onto three ongoing series with different publishers and, and, and things. But I had nothing that was just me that was, like, that was – I hate waiting. I, I'm a workaholic. And so when someone says, I'll have notes for you tomorrow, I'm like, okay, but what am I meant to do until then? Because like, <laughs> what, do I just sit? Do I just enjoy life? Do I just read a book? No, sir. I will not be doing those things. I will be freaking out that I'm wasting my life or I will be starting something new. And so this book gives me this freedom that like I can, I, I'm doing it all in six page chunks, but I can write six pages in a couple of hours and then, walk from my writing office, which I keep at 30 degrees um, because I (laughs) like the cold. And then I go inside to my warm drawing office where uh, the the ink doesn't freeze um, and uh, just start making it. You know, there's no waiting. There's no oversight. And I'm, it's, it's the best I've felt in a long time. So it's, it's, it's a surrealist soap opera about a a 35 year old dirt bag who is a, who's had to move back to Hollywood because her wife got a job at a, at a museum. And there are, there are no ghosts in the story because they're all underground. Interesting. So when does, when is this to be released and where can people find that? Uh, so, uh, January 20th, uh, that will come out on richardfairgray.com and I will be, I'll put out the first issue that day. And then, uh, starting the first Thursday of February, I will be putting out six pages a week the first three Thursdays of the month forever. Cool. Nice. So, okay, now that we know how we can find uh, uh, the book once it comes out, so if people want to find out other things about you and what you're doing, um, website or any social media like Twitter or Facebook where people can see what you're, what, or, what you're doing in your daily or, life. Or TikTok where you, you're dancing. I in am, your people of Walmart clothes. I thought until recently that I was too old for TikTok, but that illusion has been shattered. Um, I am, I'm on Instagram. That's the best place. Uh, Richard Fairgray author on Instagram. I'm also the only Richard Fairgray in the entire world. So if you Google me and you find anything, that's me. That's very well. That's me forever. If you find like a, if you find a thing on uh, on next door, uh, complaining about playground construction and how you got stuck in a slide and no one showed up because the playground was closed until you were there for nine hours. That's me. 
<laughs> if you find an Amazon review for uh, childproof locks on doors, where I where I espouse the values of uh, putting them in the on the outside of toilet stalls in airports to trap strangers, that's me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> It's a good prank. You gotta admit that's a good prank. I haven't really done it. I just really enjoy writing reviews. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Richard Fairgray on Facebook. My my icon generally is a picture of a ghost with bat wings. He's a that that's ghost bat. He's a baseball bat who died. Um, I'm on Twitter as Richard Fairgray, where I do very very good jokes that sometimes get upwards of two likes. <laughs> so, oh, super! Watch out, Neil Gaiman. I'm I'm coming for that crown <laughs> you go well this has really been fascinating it's very entertaining <laughs> and thank you so much for being on our show this time this was fun this is kd edwards author of the tarot sequence series and you're listening to the two gay geeks And here's a few selected birthdays for December 27th through January 2th, 2022. December 27th, Louis Pasteur, chemist and microbiologist who made remarkable breakthroughs in vaccination, pasteurization, and in understanding the causes and treatments of diseases. I was going to write in here, he probably single-handedly uh, saved the human race <laughs> at one point. But Well, I was going to say that according to... <laughs> at least for a few more years. <laughs> according to Blazing Saddles, he was on the verge of coming up with a cure for hoof and mouth disease. <laughs> I see. Well, he did uh, anthrax. He did uh, come up with he a did cure for treatment? anthrax. Very yes. good. And then we have Johannes Kepler, a key figure of the 17th century scientific revolution, best known for his laws of planetary motions and was named after a tele space telescope. <laughs> or he, he a was space named, telescope was named after him. I, I was going to say <laughs> that he was not named after a space telescope. He was named before a space telescope. Yes, there we go. Then we have Wilson Cruz, out gay actor, uh, most notably from Disco or Star, Star Trek, Trek Discovery. Discovery. He's got some good juicy <clears throat> stuff this yeah, season, too. Yay exactly. for him. Oh, yeah. And he filmed a public service announcement for the issue of homelessness among gay teens and uh, revealed at that time when he was filming that that he had been homeless at one time. Oh. He had been kicked out of his house on Christmas Eve. Oh, no, that's no horrible. Less. Ho horrible. Yep. Anna Russell, oh my God. singer, comedian, oh my gosh, famous for her erudite concerts and teachings of how to write your own Gilbert and Sullivan, Sullivan. opera, yes. and an expert analysis of the Ring of the Nibelungs. Yes. In it. Yes. In it. <laughs> Fafner, you, you remember, remember him? Fafner, remember him? <laughs> He's a dragon now. I'm not making, I'm making this, this up. <laughs> Sadly, she died in 2006 at the age of 95. I am she blessed was, to have seen her oh my Lord. live in San Francisco. It was one of the funniest shows I had ever attended. I, I just I, I just could not stop laughing. If you ever find any of Anna Russell on YouTube, watch it. It is just you won't hilarious. Be sorry. You will not be sorry. December 28th, Stan Lee. What do you say about Stan Lee? Mr. Marvel himself. Yeah. Uh, probably one of the greatest promoters of comics and mm -hmm. comic books and all things comics in multiple genres. So it's just, a, a, you know, sadly died here a couple of years just ago. Just a few years ago, yeah. And But um, he was uh, quite the interesting fellow. Yes, he was. Maggie Smith, oh, Dame Maggie Smith. What did you say Smith, about Maggie Smith? <laughs> actress in so many wonderful things. In Downton Abbey, where she probably gets to play herself. <laughs> I kind of think so, yeah. I think uh, the Dowager is is modeled after her. <laughs> yes. And Death on the Nile, opposite <gasps> Betty She's Davis. wonderful. Oh, my Lord. You just go ahead, ahead and fire me. me. It's like the only person who could ever stand up to Betty Smith who wasn't Joan Crawford. Betty Davis. Or Betty yes. Davis. <laughs> And then we have Linus Torvalds, software engineer and inventor of the Linux kernel that lives in so many different operating systems and, and programs. Uh, just, it, it's still running mm -hmm. on our Macs. The Linux kernel That's is there right. every day. Nichelle Nichols, Lieutenant Hurrah, 
actress, singer, wonderful ambassador for NASA and the space program for uh, bringing more women and, and women of color and she people is, of color. She into is the grand the space dam program. of Star Trek today. Exactly. December 29th, Bernard Cribbins, actor, a staple of British TV and oh, yes. a Doctor Who alumni of various, various incarnations, incarnations in <laughs> of the Doctor. Different roles. <laughs> yes. Uh, but it, mostly as uh, Wil- Wilfred... Wil- Wil- oh, he was Donna Noble's grandfather. Yes. yes. Uh, and then we have Vivica Linford. Oh, I love Swedish her. Swedish actress. Stargate. Love her. As Catherine Langford, she just was incredible. There was something so enchanting about her in the Stargate movie. Yes. Charles McIntosh, he was a, an inventor, a Scottish chemist and inventor. He invented the Macintosh. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> invented a waterproof fabric by cementing two pieces of fabric together with natural rubber. Hmm. The Macintosh raincoat has a slang name... The Mac. Of course it does. That the Beatles made famous in Penny Lane. Really? Yes. Okay. Because he was the inventor. It was a a raincoat. The Macintosh raincoat. Yes. December 30th, Jeanette Nolan, actress, a staple of TV from the 50s all the way through the early 90s. I mean, she was in everything. Everything. Just everything. It, it, too many to name. <laughs> okay. It was like, she had a part here. She did two episodes here. She did one episode here, there. She did, you know, this and that and the other. She did a couple of Twilight Zone episodes, hmm. a couple of Night Gallery episodes. She was on Manic. She was on FBI. She was on everything. I think I know who she <laughs> is. I'd have to look her up, but I think I know who she yep. is. Tracy Ullman, actress, most known for... Singer, British, even. Uh, yes. Uh, She's a recording artist. Most known for her British TV series, The Tracy Ullman Show, that launched The Simpsons. Sim- yes, it did. <laughs> she said, oh, no, I'm not bitter about The Simpsons' uh, fame and glory. They were on 30 seconds of my TV program. I wonder if they'd let me be on 30 seconds in the middle of their program. <laughs> well, I think they dated at one point. I, I'm, sh- I'm pretty sure she I'm guessed sure it she on their is. show at one point. <laughs> December 31st, Ben Kingsley, Oscar winner oh my and goodness. knight. He is at home playing comedy, drama, and he action. He can play anything. Just everything. He is anything. such a chameleon. And he really is a chameleon. You, you look at him and you say, I know that. I, I know him. Oh my God, it's Ben Kingsley. <laughs> yeah. You know, and sometimes, you know, I mean, when I first saw him as uh, Trevor, Trevor, oh my God, I thought, who is that? I know. First, well... Who t- is that? <laughs> yeah, I, I was a little stunned because I did not expect to see Ben Kingsley just pop up in Iron Man 3. <laughs> <Exactly>. Spoilers. <laughs> and then to reprieve the role, you know, or reprise the role uh, in, uh, in in Shang, Shang-Chi was... Exactly. Oh, it, was, it, it, was it was only was perfect. It was only perfect. He was a delight in that film. I'm acting here. <laughs> yes. I'm not dead. <laughs> His paternal family is from the same Indian state as Mohandas Gandhi, whom he portrayed in Gandhi. Yes. John Denver. Oh, my goodness. Singer. His grandmother gave him his first guitar while he was was living in Tucson. It was a Gibson F. jazz guitar. Yep. Uh, Environmentalist. Your hero. My hero. In so many ways. Just wonderful. An amazing human being who died. Way mm. too early. <laughs> he yep. died way too soon, and it still bothers me. Yep. January 1st, E.M. Forster, a writer, although he was gay, it was not revealed until after his death uh, with the publication of his novel Morris that made ah. it uh, was made into a, a movie by Merchant Ivory, and uh, he insisted that it not be uh, published until his after his death. Mm-hmm. Um Franklin Jella, actor, Dracula, Masters of the Universe. Oh, my God. <laughs> he was Skeletor. Skeletor. Yeah. And Deep Space Nine. Oh, yeah. So he was a Bajoran yes. in that one. I yeah. can't remember the name of the character yeah. because he was rather unremarkable in yeah. it. And several things in uh, post-production right now. Oh, good for him. And then friend uh, Natasha Bryant and Shintaro Tsuchida. January 2nd. Isaac Asimov, prolific writer and editor of over 5 
hundred books and ninety thousand letters and postcards. Mm -hmm. Amazing. One of the holy trinity of science fiction. Yeah. Most known for his hard science fiction. Very and, hard and, sci fi. Uh, foundation. And uh, fascinating that uh, in Foundation, we learned some things about the robotic laws, mm -hmm. not to give anything away. No. But, uh, something interesting there. Yeah. And it makes me want to go back and, I and read I, I'm going to, well, I, I not read, well, yeah, read iRobot again and maybe try and yet one more time try and tackle the Foundation series. Exactly. <laughs> Good luck. <clears throat> And then we have Roger Miller, singer, honky tonk influenced popular music uh, such as like King of the Road. Oh yeah, trailers for sale or rent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, yep. That song, and also it is surprisingly, his birthday is separated by two days for uh, the theologian Roger Miller. Oh well, <laughs> of course it is. Fascinating. Yes, and that's it. For the birthdays this time. Hi, this is Kevin. And this is Jason. And we're the co-hosts of The Bright Side with Kevin and Jason, your weekly comedy about tragedy. Every week, I teach Kevin about some tragic event in history, and then we find the bright side to it. And every week, I learn from Jason something I wish I never knew. You can find our podcast anywhere you find podcasts. That's The Bright Side with Kevin and Jason, your weekly comedy about tragedy. Go give a listen to our friends, uh, Kevin and Jason, over at the Bright Side Podcast. I'm Daniel Radcliffe, and I believe that reaching out for help is the bravest thing a person can do. If you are struggling and need support, call the Trevor Lifeline at 1-866-488-7386. It's free and confidential, and trained counselors are there to listen 24-7 without judgment. To learn more about the Trevor Project's life-saving work for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or questioning young people, go to thetrevorproject.org. We want to give a shout-out at the Joshua Tree Feeding Program, a 501c3 nonprofit food pantry for the HIV and AIDS community in Maricopa and Pinal counties. Joshua Tree offers a place where clients can select from a wide assortment of nutritional foods to take home, and it's set up just like a store so they can pick and choose what they want. It empowers the clients so no food is wasted. They also have a second distribution for those in the gender non-conforming community that may be experiencing food insecurity, regardless of HIV status. You can give a gift to the Joshua Tree Feeding Program, a single gift, or a monthly recurring gift by going to jtfp.org. <laughs> And it's time for our feedback segment. This is where we read comments that were generated from articles or episodes that we ran on our website at tggeeks.com. And the links, or in this case, the link for this um, article cannoli. will be in the show notes. It's only seven pages long. I know. The link for this feedback. <laughs> Are you article. sure we're going to make it? <laughs> yeah, that's why I was going to include it in last episode. Holy I thought, moly. Oh, no, 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 no. This one's too long. It's got to It's got to have an episode all to itself. And yes, the link for this article that generated this feedback will be in the show notes for this episode number 358 at teachgeeks.com. And this is the gift that keeps on giving. Yes. Regarding Dragon Riders of Pern movie, what we know, not much. We got a comment from Jeff Baker, who's a friend of the show. Now, oh boy, he responded to two different previously posted comments. So to keep this in some sort of context, I have to read their comments as well. Of so, course you do. 
Let me start off. <laughs> now, responding to a comment that Bob Beers left on our website ages ago, Bob Beers said this. The only reason I could think of for the development hell bit is that McCaffrey Estate is holding fast to Anne's mandate on any characteristics in the film must be faithful to the book. In other words, Hollywood can't rewrite her world. You have to wonder why any studio would want to, but based on what we've seen, come out of there, dot, dot, dot. So Jeff Baker responds, you never know what some Hollywood types are going to do. I remember watching Tom Clancy's Clear and Present Danger and thinking, wow, they totally screwed up one of the major subplots of Some of All Fears. Then, when Some of All Fears came out, they really butchered it. Then, he responds to A underscore Dragon Rider's comment, and this is what A underscore Dragon Rider said. In my honest opinion, Peter Jackson did a great job sticking to the script in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I read the books as soon as after they came out and was thrilled to see the characters, including the orcs and other difficult-to-imagine characters, pretty close to what I thought they'd look and act like. Anne McCaffrey's books held just as much detail. I would think of a producer of Mr. Jackson's caliber could pull this off. And yes, we have the technology. The dragons and the snake in Harry Potter were pretty convincing. I would dearly love to see a movie or three or dot, 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 true to form with the books. Anything else, anything else would be a disappointment. So Jeff Baker responds. I felt the same way. I think of Lord of the Rings as some of the best movies I have ever seen. I'm 68, by the way, so that's quite a few movies. I have been hoping for a Pern movie for a long time, but there is always the fear that they will screw it up. There is plenty of material for many movies. Here's hoping. And that is our feedback. Are you done? I'm done. Oh, my gosh. Well, Jeff is done, so I'm done. (laughs) Sorry. I, I got... I, Did you I, get a, you know, I went kinda, to sleep. I took went, a nap. Oh, I, I was wondering you got the deer in the headlights look, you know. And, uh, almost, mm. yeah. No, I'm just kidding. It was fascinating. That that article, seriously, I wrote that just as... We needed something. Something. And the Vils- I, to take up space, and who knew? I, I looked up uh, a bunch of stuff and slapped it all together. If you want to leave a comment, you can do that on our Facebook page or our uh, website at tggeeks.com. You can do it on Twitter or Instagram, or for the episodes, you can go to YouTube and leave a comment there as well. We also have a listener feedback line that's getting a little dusty. We need to blow the dust off. We want to hear from you. Leave us a voicemail. Call us. We'll play it on air, and you can be famous just like us. Mm -hmm. Or not. (laughs) Or not like us. <laughs> Call 469-TG-GEEKS. That is 469-844-3357. And as always, please, please play, play nice. nice. As everyone knows, hopefully, that we are huge supporters of independent creators, whether it's filmmakers, comic book artists, writers, or others. We want you to go and seek these independent creators that you know about. Find their websites, find their Etsy pages, their Facebook pages, their Twitter, Instagram, TikToks, wherever they are. Check out their stuff that they have available. Chat them up. Chat other people up about them. Buy their stuff. Please consider supporting independent creators. If you are trans or are questioning your gender identity, and if you are in crisis or are feeling isolated and need someone to talk to, or you know of someone in a similar situation, there is a special hotline just for you. The hotline is provided by translifeline.org and staffed by trained counselors who are transgender themselves. The hotline in the U.S. is 877-565-8860. In Canada, it is 877-330-6366. Or you can go to translifeline.org to learn about the important work they are doing. Please reach out for help. You are not alone. Yeah, baby! They're like two gay geeks. They're together, you know. They're two gay guys and they're geeks. Is that okay? Well, 
Well, it's time for a second segment. I actually do have something. You have something? I got something, and this is actually a follow-up to what we discussed last week in our second segment, and that was uh, Katie Edwards' The Hourglass Throne, which comes ah, out yes. in May. In May. Now, in the meantime, this wonderful gentleman writes lots and lots and lots of little stuff. Oh, my uh, gosh. Short stories, novellas, uh, things to kind of like fill in the gaps, uh, and he shares those. He shares all of those uh, through social media, and he has uh, written something brand new, which, as of this recording, came out last night. And it is something that takes place before book three, and it's about uh, uh, it's 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 basically called a royal. Um, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Hold on, I will look it up because I've got it written here. Uh, it is the Great Atlantean Battle Royalchemy. It, <laughs> yeah, it, this is very lighthearted, uh, which you're going to need because uh, things get very, very serious in book three. But this one is, uh, yeah, this one starts off pretty pretty light. It's it's the first chapter about uh, uh, some sort of a, well, think of a Great British Bake Off <clears throat> set in a, a New Atlantis with Rune as a judge. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, and and Brand being all kind of PO'd about it. So, but yeah, the he's got all these wonderful short stories. He he wrote something about the winter solstice uh, that was that was wonderful. Um, he's written he wrote a, a fantastic scene that was based on the early days of the Great Pause. I mean, the guy is just really he's written some really fantastic stuff. So, if you're getting completely anxious about waiting for the Hourglass Throne, because, yes, we did get some really, 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 really early copies of it, and you don't want to wait till May, and you've you've already read through books one and two countless times. He's got a myriad of short story stuff that you can get to by way of his Twitter page, and we will share the link to that site on our website in the show notes so that people can get to it and see... All the wonderful stuff that he continues to add, you know, and when I say continues, he really does continue to add new content there whenever he has the opportunity to do so. Yep. Wow, well, we actually have a weekly review. <laughs> yeah. Well, these are a, a lot are of we projecting su- here? suggestions. Yes, we are projecting here <laughs> yeah, because we're time shifting. Yeah. yeah, some of this stuff we've we've already got. You know, kind there, of. Yeah, there will yeah. be there will be some movie reviews coming out uh, for the twenty second. I know that. Uh, don't have those quite scheduled in here, but yeah, we've got some stuff. These are some things that we are looking at putting out. Uh, this coming week, uh, this coming week, or oh, what will have been last week when you listen to this. Or whatever. Yeah, because uh, we're time shifting. Uh, starting with Sunday, December 19th, Nerdy Chupacabras number 79. On Monday the 20th, TG Geeks episode number 357. On Tuesday the 21st, Devet King's Man. Review. Oh, that's right. Devet's going to be reviewing The King's Man, uh, as well as um, Andreas Tender Bar. Review. Review. Okay. Oh, Andrea's. Yes. I, 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 yeah, it's Andrea's, Andrea Richhoff's Tender Bar. And on uh, <laughs> Wednesday, the 22nd, press release for Hamish. You don't even know what you put in the calendar. <laughs> well, no, well, I, I, well, I read, I saw that. There's no apostrophe before the S, so I'm thinking, Andrea, do, the only Andreas that I know is... The Andreas is, Trin- Tender Bar. Well, I'm, I'm thinking Andreas <laughs> Katsoulis, you know, but he's <laughs> he's passed on, so I can't think of who else we might be talking about. His bar should be pretty tender then. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm thinking, uh, I don't know anybody named Andreas who's reviewing Tender Bar. Oh, Andreas. Got it. Well, I was trying to furiously type this stuff in while you were talking. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, moving on, Wednesday the 22nd, press release for Hamish Downey's Matcha and Vanilla. Uh, and then uh, Thursday the 23rd, Andrea Richall's review of Matcha and Vanilla. And then on Friday the 24th, oh, I love this one. This always makes me smile. This is from Keith's Holiday Corner. Rudolph triumphs over the bullies of Christmas Town. And then on Christmas Day, we'll have something. Not quite sure what yet, but we'll have something. Yeah. And that's it for <laughs> DGGeeks.com. How about that? <laughs> 
We have some shout outs that we need to make. I got a head brush reading that. I tell you, <laughs> I am dizzy after reading that weekly review. Uh, we have some shout outs. First to our good friend Brian Weber, also known as Arkle. He is on Twitter, referred to as Brian the Ampersand List YouTuber. And you can find him by going to Twitter. Search for Geek of All Trades. G, the number three, the number three, K of All Trades. And while you're looking for all, you know, he's got his Arkle Times Post Dispatch news. You can find it there. That's why we mentioned it. And while you're looking for all things Arkle, go to his YouTube channel. It's Arkle Studios. He's got a number of projects there. Shameless Cash Grab Series, which is in season, season seven. And hopefully he did put out something for Christmas Day. Uh, he's Rants vs. Zombies series. It has ended, but past episodes are still there. He also has Arkle Tier Ranks, in which he rates various things, as well as game videos of Trick and Treat, as well as Star Trek Online. We must also give some shout-outs to a couple of Facebook groups for allowing us to post our episodes and articles on their pages. First two, Gay Geeks After Hours. We have to thank their moderators for literally saying that we could share away our content there. Their URL is facebook.com slash group slash Gay Geeks After Hours. And then two, The Gay Geek for also allowing us to share our stuff there. And their URL is facebook.com slash group slash The Gay Geek. And as always, we give special thanks to their high imperial potentate moderator, Jeremiah Reeves. Thank you, Jeremiah. Other places we are found are Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, Amazon Podcasts, as well as where other fine podcasts can be found. Also, check us out on Sci-Fi Radio at 3 a.m. and 3 p.m. Pacific Time on Tuesdays for a replay and listen to their other content. They are a 24-hour geeky internet radio station. Please rate us and review us on iTunes, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And that should do it for this episode of TG Geeks Webcast. Be sure to check out the article on the article for this webcast episode. We'll have several links on the page. And remember, you can comment on our Facebook page or our website, tggeeks.com. Or you can leave us a voicemail at 469-TG-Geeks. That is 469-844-3357 from TG Squared Studios. I'm Keith Lane. Thanks for listening. Please be kind to yourself and those around you. Stay safe. Wear a mask. Get vaccinated. Peace. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>